they do tend to be rare finds, but for example, in the last ice age, we get very, very rapid oscillations in temperature. So you could have a situation where, for example, you will be living in temperatures as warm as today, your grandchildren could be living in the depths of an ice age. We're talking about rapid, almost instantaneous change. And this puts a lot of ecological stress on many of the mammals, and of course it, it disrupts natural distribution. And right at the very end of the last ice age, there appears to be a period of rapid, intense, and very sharp aridity, which causes the appearance of a very unusual species in Britain, and that's the Saiga antelope. Now these animals are critically endangered today, they only occur in their heartlands. in Saiga range and they occur right the way over to deepest darkest Somerset and set off in the opposite direction and are found in Alaska. So they can respond extremely quickly to environmental change. Roll clock. Various species. Family. Crusetidae. The big mammals are important in a number of ways but the small mammals also add a huge amount of information. One of the reasons being that because they have very rapid turnovers, so they breed very quickly, it means that evolutionary trends can be seen very quickly, they're perpetuated very rapidly in the population. And we're able to use some of these small mammal species, in particular different species of voles, for measuring very precisely these evolutionary changes. And in fact there's a rather well-known example which is the water vole, and it's often nicknamed the vole clock, because changes happen in a series of ways So AHOP have returned to various artefacts that actually have 
already been radio carbon dated and have radio carbon dated them again. Why was that necessary? Well, as with any scientific method, there have been improvements as the method of radio carbon dating has been used over the decades. And uh, one thing which the AHOP team worked on in a lot of detail was the effect that contamination of radiocarbon samples can have on the age that's produced from that sample. And it seems that even very small amounts of recent carbon, if introduced into a sample that's very old, can skew the age that you can get and therefore causes a great deal problem in trying to interpret when the contaminant occurs. So what the AHOP team have done is gone back to previously dated things, redated them, and got much more reliable results from those predicted from these new methods. And talking to Chris Stringer, a lot of the time when that redating is done, it pushes dates back earlier than yes. previously thought. Yes, that's the case. It's because when you're dealing with radiocarbon, the reason that you like radiocarbon is 